Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's do this. It's nice to be back. It feels like we've been away for a while. But it then feels... you weren't on the last podcast. because I can't believe you did it without me. And also How the podcast. How dare you? <laughs> so I chatted to the, the guy who's taken 22 years to release his game on Game Boy Advance, <laughs> which if you don't have one now, it's very hard to get hold of. Well done. You Look, can't clap, look. I've hurt my hand. Oh, you should see him. It's a sorry sight. How well, did you do it, Chris? I was playing rugby. Yeah, lad. Absolute lad. And uh, I caught the ball badly and injured my tiny little finger. His little finger. <laughs> so I'm out of action for six weeks. Um, but it does mean I, I can still play games. But I was going to say, has it, has it hindered you? Yeah. The left hand is a bit of a claw. <laughs> Like, ah. So it's uh, proving to be difficult, but I still managed to play a few games. Okay. On the podcast today, those games include Luigi's Mansion 2, the Time Splitters Trilogy, uh, there's also Assassin's Creed Mirage, Kerry Allen, who's been on the podcast before, playing Crime Scene Cleaner, and then there's also Retro Revival Beyond Good and Evil. It's so back. much to pack in. I know, we better get on with it. Stop kidding around, Snake. Let's get the news. First of all, here's Nick. The Xbox 360 store and the Xbox 360 marketplace are no longer being supported by Microsoft. Yes, it's a sad day in the history of gaming, but the good news is if you bought anything before it was shut down, you can keep using the content. Fallout London has finally been released. The long-awaited community-developed mod features the former Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko, as a character in the game. Uh, protect and survive. Order. Order. High-profile YouTube stars KSI and the Sidemen have been named alongside the creators of Candy Crush, Minecraft and Grand Theft Auto as some of the richest gamers and creators in the UK. No surprise there. The first Sunday Times Top 30 Gaming Rich List reveals that more than a quarter of the gamers and developers on the list are under 35, believe it or not. But there are just three women, yes three, in the Top 30. Come on, guys. Or gals. Or gals. Can't believe that. You're not one of the three then, or are you? Well... Who knows? I wish. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, That's not, a bit poor, though, isn't it? It's just a long way to go still. I mean, we, we'd like to think that gaming is making strides, but mm. there's a lot more room. For sure. People. Well, where do you want to start, then? Well, I want to start with the game I've been playing. Mm-hmm. Luigi's Mansion 2. It's another Mario game. I love it. Another one. I think it's one of my favourites. So for those who haven't played Luigi's Mansion 2, what kind, what's it like? What's the vibe? So imagine, right? Do you remember back in the day mm. when Spyro was a thing? Yeah. And Croc. Yeah. You loved Croc, I loved didn't you? Croc. Yeah. Love it. Mar- okay. Is it like Mario 64 as well? Yeah. Okay, so imagine those three like got together, had a rendezvous, and then they're lo- with a, with with the poltergeist, <laughs> with the ghost, and Ghostbusters. Uh, it, well, Ghostbusters is a good word to use. This is what you get because it it looks a little bit like Croc and Spyro and the old Mario's, and it's beautifully done and it looks really really nice. It's my sort of game. If you if you like those kind of easy sort of adventure games, a bit like Crash Bandicoot or um, I don't know. Yeah, Spyro. Then this is this is your sort of game. Also, if you love the Mario franchise, this is definitely up your street. I like that it features Luigi though. Well, he always is, a side He's character. the star of the show. And what's <laughs> even better is that he uses a vacuum cleaner basically to suck up the ghosts. So it's a bit like Ghostbusters. So the the story is. Oh, you actually got the story because I played a bit of this game and I had no idea what well, was going no, no, on. The thing, the, the, I say the worst thing about <clears> this game. I'll come back to the storyline in just a sec. But the worst thing about this game, and see if you agree, is that massive like 
introduction scene that you cannot skip. I actually managed... Oh, I managed to skip it. ...to have a bath, cook dinner, <laughs> have a nap, and then come back, and it was still playing. I, for once, and you know me, I like it to, to watch all the cutscenes. I skipped it, so I couldn't tell it, you the story. Because you, you can't long. skip it. Too, no, you can, you can. You, have you to, can't. I did. You have to hold a certain button. I can't I remember what it is. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a hack. <laughs> so, well, the storyline is that the bad guy comes along, he turns all the ghosts into bad ghosts, and it's up to you as Luigi to vacuum them all up, to <laughs> suck them all up and get them in your backpack. And you have a, a Nintendo DS, which I absolutely love. Oh, it's like your guide. As your guiding. As your guiding, like, map. Like, yeah. your, and your cell phone to the to the mad scientist. Called EGAD. EGAD. I think it's very timely because we've got Halloween coming up. Yeah. This is a great game to start playing during that time. Uh, what I found disrespectful was that the character Egad, the crazy scientist, looks no, like... Egad. Egad. He looks like a baby. Yeah. And then he's calling Luigi Sonny. Yeah. Hey, Sonny, go and do this. Up. Disrespectful is to it, Luigi. It is disrespectful. Luigi's been around for a long time. Yeah, he's about 70. Yeah, yeah he's looking good, though. <laughs> Clarence, mate. Especially for a plumber. He's all like manual <laughs> labour. Um, but what I found funny was that this EGAD person can teleport you into the haunted yeah. house where you go and do stuff. But but he teleports you miles out of the haunted house and you have to go towards it. It's like, just send me right there. Right. Just cut out the middleman. Right. Just send me right to the end game if you can teleport me. Yeah. But I mean, this is, it's a very easy game to play if you don't want to think too much about it. If you like, like I say, like if you like the old Mar- Mario franchise, you like... Um, I don't know, just an easy game. This is the one for you. The the puzzles I found super interesting because like it took me a while to work out, but you can suck up uh, rugs and cloths and things as well as a ghost and then treasure it and then there'll be treasure like hiding in the chandelier. But you only find that if you put point the hoover upwards. No, you point the the light up. You got a torchlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's how you aim it. And I thought actually these puzzles could have been much more basic, but it, it was very entertaining. I would. I actually really, really enjoyed this game, so I would give this a nine out of ten. Wow! Download it now and then play it near <laughs> Halloween time. Yeah, maybe you download it at Halloween though when it's a bit cheaper because you oh, know yeah. it's fifty quid at the moment. Okay, <laughs> okay. And don't forget that is only out on the Switch. Now, a game from my childhood. Next, <clears throat> you're getting excited for this one. Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. <laughs> yep. This is uh, a, a retro revival, really. Time Splitters Trilogy is out on the uh, PS Plus subscription and you can buy them on their own. I've got to be honest, and this is really bad to say that I'm on a gaming podcast, but I never played it. Not everybody played Time Splitters. Imagine Goldeneye or Perfect Dark or that yeah. series of games. All those people went and made a PlayStation game called Time Splitters. Ooh. Now, Time Splitters is where the, the story is quite confusing, but there's there are time crystals and that means that you can teleport through time. And what's happening is some evil aliens are messing up the timeline of humanity. Oh. And you're travelling through time as a hero, like back to Siberia, back to the Dark Ages, back to some desert landscape to try and get all these time crystals to save the day, to kill all the aliens, whatever. The first one, it wasn't my favourite to start with, but now it's kind of unplayable. Like the graphics aren't good enough, it doesn't hold up, the aiming's rubbish. I wouldn't recommend it. The second one was probably my favourite game of all time as a child. Wow. Must have played it more than Goldeneye, more than anything. More than Resident Evil. More than Resident Evil, more than all of my childhood games. The problem is that the like the Goldeneye revival the N64 that they, they revived onto the Switch, the aiming is too poor. It, the controls Come are just guys. too bad. Just sort that out and it becomes a very playable game. The third one is just about okay. The aiming's a little bit better, but unless you have the nostalgia factor, it's not worth going back to play. Like, you shouldn't play this because <laughs> you don't remember it. No. Now, I, I do remember it and I loved it, but... So you're a little bit sympathetic. You let things slide because you just like the nostalgia of it. Yeah, but the problem is that 2 is my favourite game and I thought 3 was okay. So now when I'm going back to play it... Has it ruined it for you? I don't know. I just think to buy them for £8 individually, it's not that expensive. And if you've got it free with the PS Plus subscription, okay. But I just think, sadly, it's not one that's going to take up as much time as I was hoping. But I would say that overall you're looking at probably, a, for the bundle, for the collection, maybe a 5 out of 10. Maybe buy the third one on its own. Hello, hello, follow me, okay. Next up is Kerry Allen, who's been playing Crime Scene Cleaner. So a few months back, a friend of mine introduced me to the simulation game House Flipper. And I was amazed how relaxing it was playing a simulation game where you literally just do mundane household chores like vacuum carpets, clean windows and throw away rubbish in order to spruce up homes. 
So I blamed her when I got a Steam recommendation this week for the newly released Crime Scene Cleaner, which seemed to take the concept even further. If you like simulation games, tidying and like going that extra mile to get 100% completion points, then this is probably the game for you, because your role is to clean up messy crime scenes before the police get there, to get a mop and bucket out and clean blood spattered walls and put furniture back where it was, and obviously dispose of the odd dead body or two. Of course, if you don't like Blood and Guts, then I have to say now this isn't the game for you. But there I was, finding myself watching the trailer on release date. And seeing the gameplay look quite similar to House Flipper, I thought, I'm going to have to give this a try. And I have to say that one thing I found surprisingly good about the game is that it seems to have a really good story to it. With some simulation games, you get a little bit of a story, but I say that very much takes a back seat to the actual gameplay. With this, though, it feels like you really get to know the character you're playing as. It's first person, and you're a man looking to make some money for his unwell daughter, and you do a favour for one of your dubious mates and realise you've probably bit off more than you can chew. At the end of the first clean-up, you get to go back to your apartment, clean up, wander around and ask yourself, what on earth have you just done? And then the next morning your phone starts ringing, and it seems your dubious friend has set you up for even more clean-up missions that are also episodic chapters. Now I have to say, I could not stop playing this when I gave it a try. I mean, you don't feel you can leave until you've left the place spotless. And there's a dark sense of humour to it that I have to say mean videos on this are going to be a fun watch on Twitch. But I'd say try it now before the hype, as you'll be wanting to figure out how to clean up the crime yourself without having others spoil it for you. And then by all means, go and laugh at people on Twitch trying to figure out how to get a dead body down a fire escape. And that's about 15 quid on Steam, and it sounds a bit like too much fun. And it's your kind of game because you're cleaning up stuff. <laughs> God, I love it. But then, but would you do that in a game when you... you... Yeah. What, so you clean? I'd be amazing at it. You'd be good, but, but would I'd you get not all be the like... bonus points so that nobody would see it. Be like, oh, clean behind the door. But like, yeah, mate. There's a blood know splatter that. over there that you all already... missed. I've got this like six cents where I'm like, Zzzz. that's where the dust is. I know it. So I'd be, I'd, I would literally get top points all the time. Yep, yeah, I'm downloading that now. Uh, a quick game that I tried to play on the mobile, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, which I was very excited Mirage. for. Um, anyway, have a listen to this. Another Assassin's Creed. Not another one. Yeah, this one's called Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, but it's on the mobile phone, which is a, an unusual platform for an Assassin's Creed game because you wouldn't think that you'd actually be able to do all the cool moving around and jumping and stuff that comes along with the Assassin's Creed games on a handheld platform. So we'll see how we go here. Now, just to let you know, I've already struggled to actually log into this game. I got stuck in an endless loop of uh, you need to load up the game, press the button, and then it wouldn't let me do it, and I just sort of went round and round a few times. But now it seems like we're in business here, and it says that this is a in game inspired by historical events. Oh, that's cool. The screen expanded. Connect me now to Ubisoft Connect. This is what went wrong before. I'd say connect, and then it says online service error, and then we go round and round in a circle. A problem occurred while trying to communicate with the servers. And, and, and on we go. So I've turned it off and on again, and it's now managed to connect me. It says, do I want to continue with Ubisoft, Apple, or Facebook? Okay, I guess we'll use my Apple ID to play. It's the price you pay, I guess. I mean, the full game price is about 22 quid or something, so I will give it a free trial to start with. Right, we're doing a new game. You asked me once about this memory. I lied. I told you it was lost. I worried the wrong lesson would be learned. This is a guy called William Miles, apparently. I don't know who that is. And we're in the desert. Many lives, and he has much to teach us. Oh, it's got subtitles on, and it says brackets laboured breathing. <laughs> okay, we're finally getting some gameplay here. So the screen has an analog stick in the bottom left corner, uh, and the mission is called the Master Thief of Anbar, and it says leave the hideout. So this is where. Oh, I've already been told what to do. Touch and drag the virtual stick on the empty space on the left side of the screen. Drag and hold it to move faster. So this is where we're going to find out if this is actually an acceptable control method or not. And it's pretty sensitive, I guess. Let us not keep the wish waiting. 
I cannot bear another lecture. That is like a Darwish. These contracts. It is quite a few Darwish has pushed your way now. <laughs> Darwish. I will come through. So the walking's okay, a little bit of lagging already. Um, I can control the camera with the right analog stick. Uh, the frame rate is not brilliant, which is pretty bad because these mobile phones are quite strong these days. So we're in Baghdad in 861 CE and the phone cannot quite handle it. Okay, we can free run across obstacles. So that's what we're going to experiment with now. Uh, I don't know which button the free run is. It's that one. Okay, we're free running, and it's the usual Assassin's Creed jazz of smoothly tackling the environment, I guess. It's the, God, the buttons are quite um, complicated. There's a lot of buttons here. There's a fight button, a free running button, a sprint button, a jump button, I think. Uh, and the camera jerks around quite a lot. Oh, the lag is extreme. It's also saving, which means that everything's frozen. Uh, oh, cutscene again. I don't think this is going to be a very fun game, to be honest with you. It doesn't really this feel contract. fun. It, unfortunately, it just can't quite handle the, the graphics of this game. I mean, yeah. You can't justify £22 for this. So it's kind of unplayable, really. So that's... Uh, <laughs> that's uh, I, would, I would not recommend. Right. I'm looking! Right, last one for this edition. It's another retro revival. Uh, another g Now, this is different to Time Splitters because I played that like crazy in my childhood. I was never allowed to play Beyond Good and Evil. And they've released a 20th anniversary edition. <laughs> Jade, 20 years ago, your parents put you under my care. We came to Hillis. Back then, it was a peaceful planet. I had hoped to raise you there safely. The war has arrived at the gates of Hillis. They're coming. This peaceful mining planet in System 4 is now completely encircled by the Dark Armada. General can't go there, Jade. If you want, I'll go alone. Okay, we'll go together. But I'm sticking to you like bees on honey, whether you like it or not. Why weren't you allowed to play this game? I think it was at the time, I mean, 20 years ago, I would have been 14, and it had some darker themes. And also, I think I was just playing a lot of other games at the time, but I, I always like the look of your player's a character called Jade. Um, and it's very much like a Spyro the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot style game. You're roaming around these, um, not really open, open worlds, but these maps. And the characters are funny, like there's a pig who's your companion. And then you've got, um, it's just like those classic games, like Jack and Daxter. Yeah. Or, or all of those sort of retro games. And for some reason, I, I don't know, it was very hard to get hold of. And then the time passed and they hadn't re-released it and you just couldn't play it anymore. Oh. But they've just released it now with this 20th anniversary edition. And I have to say... It's awesome. Will it be up my street? Yeah, it's like it's like a darker Ratchet and Clank, <gasps> a darker Crash Bandicoot. Yes, um, this is why I love. It's like a Ubisoft game, which they've they've remastered like a little bit of the graphics, but everything else is kind of the same. It has has a warning at the beginning, Does saying it? this game has some stereotypes in that we're not as proud of now, but we've left really? them in and stuff like that. That's interesting. I mean, there's Disney like a start doing that. Yeah, well, there's like a Spanish character who's very sort of stereotypical, and you can see why they've put the, the warning. In. You know, there's a Jamaican um, place where you buy upgrades for your ship early on in the game, and it's a little bit kind of. Okay. Uh, I don't think it would fly today. Okay. But having said that, it's ca very characterful. Um, there's a side little thing that you do where you take pictures of different species like the, your pig companion and a bit all. like pokemon very much like pokemon snap and that uh, upgrades your camera and gives you points and stuff and i found it very entertaining especially because it's 20 years old i was shocked to 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 be going back to it 
much more than I thought. Is this a sort of game, again, a bit like the um, first game we were talking about, Luigi's Mansion, where you can just pick it up, yeah. easy to play? The sa- saving is a bit annoying because you have to save at a save point. Ah, and in this, da- in this day and age, we don't have Who does that. that. I think it was easier back then to program it like that. But in this day and age, you're used to just saving all the time. But that's the only thing. But I would say it's even got sort of Final Fantasy X vibes to it, you know. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I want to play this. You sold it to me. When you said it's a darker version of Ratchet & Clank, Mm. I'm like, yep. It is like that. That's exactly what I want. You'd love it. It's only £18 and it's out on all platforms. Uh, Not mobile devices, but all the main uh, consoles. I'm playing it on Steam Deck now and it runs great. So How much? 18 Wow. Not bad. That is a bargain. To say Luigi's Mansion's 50 I don't know. I think if you haven't played this or if you want that nostalgia, this is a good shout. And what would you give it out of 10? Eight. It just because of the stereotypes, a little bit, little bit not hundred percent now, and also I feel like they could have slightly improved the camera and some of the uh, other aspects of it. But it's pretty good, you know. Like I say, very cheap. What have we got? Wow. That's all that I wrote. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's some good games to play there. I'm excited though because next month there's Star Wars Outlaws, which is a, a big one. Yeah. Another Ubisoft. Coming soon as well, there's uh, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 or whatever it's called, which you're not, you, you're like, yeah, literally falling asleep. Uh, there's Sorry. Just a few... Sorry for anybody who likes that game. <laughs> well, we, we don't know yet. Uh, but there's a few bits and pieces coming out. There's some cool stuff on the horizon. So um, yeah. It feels like there's a, a Halloween theme. You want to do a scary special? I want to do a scary special. No, we're near Halloween yet. It's, it's August, September. No, we're, we're, practically, we're practically in September. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> Which is practically October, which is practically Halloween. But no, lots of stuff. Uh, let us know what you're playing as well, by the way, uh, at Naked Amy Pod. We'd love to hear from you. I've got to turn the potatoes off. I just remembered I've left them simmering. And that's practically the end. And now it is.